When it comes to sport bikes, the good old inline four-cylinder engine has become the gold standard when it comes to performance-oriented engines. These days, however, V4 powerplants have become a lot more powerful and have managed to eke out more performance across the rev range. Furthermore, V4 engines have gone on to power to most successful racing motorcycles in today's modern era. In my previous video, why Japanese are not adopting the V4 engine. A lot of people support the V4 engine. So now let's dive a little deeper to the inner workings of our beloved motorcycle. What exactly makes the inline 4 engine such a timeless design? Meanwhile, why is the V4 engine becoming so popular among European manufacturers? Is the inline 4 engine's reign of glory coming to an end? Watch on to find out. The good old inline 4 engine has been around for more than half a century. Some bikes that are responsible for propelling this engine layout into stardom include the venerable Honda CB750, a bike that is considered by many as the very first superbike. The inline four-cylinder engine is characterized by its four cylinders which are situated in line or parallel. Available in either 180-degree or 270-degree crankshaft layouts, this engine has become a staple in the world of racing. As for its characteristics, inline four engines are known for producing most of their power and torque high up in the rev range. It isn't uncommon for performance-oriented inline four engines to be capable of revving all the way up to 14,000 RPM. As for sound, they produce the iconic howl that has become synonymous with racing, similar to the sound racing bikes of the 90s equals and early 2000s produced. These days, however, the inline four engine is beginning to show its age in the performance game, with V4 powered motorcycles from Europe cranking out a lot more performance, as is evidenced by their success in the world of racing. This brings us to the V4 engine. Now, this layout has been in production for several decades as well, but has only recently hit the mainstream when manufacturers like Ducati and Aprilia began using them on their mainstream street bikes. This came in parallel with Ducati's huge success in MotoGP and World Superbike, making use of its new V4 engine. Proving that it had the edge against the older, inline four powered bikes, the V4 began making its way into production motorcycles with the most popular of which being the Ducati Panigale V4. As the name suggests, a V4 engine has four cylinders with two-cylinder banks, two cylinders in each bank. Think of it as two V-twin engines strapped together side by side. Now, if you're familiar with the power delivery of a V-twin, then you'd know that it has a healthy spread of power from low in the rev range, but has the tendency to taper off at the upper reaches of the tachometer. The V4 engine gets the same healthy spread of power and torque but manages to spin faster thereby producing more power at a wider range of revs. Because of this, it's not surprising that most manufacturers in the MotoGP, Honda, KTM, and Ducati are all using V4 engines for their race bikes. And unlike the inline-4 engine, with an increase in bore size, the engine does not get wider as much as the inline-4. If you were to look at things from a strictly competitive standpoint, it's pretty clear that the V4 engine has its benefits when compared to the inline-4 engine. It generally produces more power across a wider range of revs and is a lot narrower, making for a slimmer, more nimble motorcycle. But in my previous video, I mentioned the disadvantages of a V4 engine, like V4 engines are expensive to produce, difficult to maintain, and can get very hot, especially since the rear cylinders are positioned right below the rider's butt. And also mentioned that road legal bike like CX-10R, R1, S1000RR do not need a V4 engine because the advantages of V4 does not matters for normal rides. This is why the good old inline 4 continues to live on. It's simply a tried and tested package that's compact, relatively affordable to produce, and easy to maintain. It can't be denied, however, that the inline 4's glory days in the world of racing are well and truly behind it. So, there you have it, folks. The classic inline 4 and the feisty V4, two powerhouse engines with their quirks and qualities. What's your take on this rev-hungry rivalry? If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more thrilling content like this, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with your fellow riders, and subscribe to the SK channel. Your support means the world to us. Until next time, ride safe and stay tuned for more two-wheel action. Cheers, and remember, it's all about the ride.